That's a track called 13 Years. It's from the new CD by Gabriel Zakai. And in the studio right now, it is Gabe Zakai. Thanks for coming down to the show. Charlie, great to be here. Thanks a lot for having me. Really like that track, and we're going to talk all about your new record and other things about you. But first, let's, let's talk about that song, because I've been playing it for weeks. Really like it. Uh, anything you want to tell the listeners about that particular track? Yeah, 13 Years. That was written last summer. I came down here to Portland. Uh, I live up in Camden. That's where my studio is and my house. And uh, I came down here to meet a friend. Long story, but a guy I hadn't seen in 13 years. One of those uh, sort of fallings out you uh, have and you don't even know why you haven't spoken. And it's been so long, nobody even cares anymore. And I came down here and played some bluegrass with him and had a hell of a night. And I went home and I wrote that. And I was just really happy that it had been picked up like, you know, where it was left off, like nothing ever happened. Well, it sounds sounds terrific. The whole record sounds great. What's the title of the new record? Uh, the new CD is called 10,000 Empty Water Glasses. I didn't want to get that wrong, so I had, had, <laughs> had you do it. Uh, before we get into the new record, why don't you tell some of the listeners maybe who aren't familiar with you a little bit about yourself and your, your musical career? I uh, grew up right across the bridge from here in Cape Elizabeth, started playing music when I was like 15 years old, started playing guitar, started writing music, traveled around the country, Took off, went out west, did the whole, you know, hitchhike to California thing. Always writing songs, always keeping notebooks. And I put out my first, well, the first release I ever did was a remastering of all the old Tascam cassettes that I had over the years. And I did my best to, you know, first first computer I got a hold of, I tried to immortalize those so they wouldn't disintegrate. But the first uh, new CD I ever put out was called The Distance done around 2003, I think. And uh, I was off and running from there. I started getting better equipment to my wife's credit. She's the one that finally pushed me out of analog tape for better or worse. I'd have to say better at this point. And um, I've just been trying to improve equipment since then. And, uh, you know, for years I just did, I did everything. I controlled everything. I played everything myself. And uh, this album, I finally pulled some other people into it. I'm so tired of of, of doing it all myself, and it was great. I've got uh, Mark Bubar on drums on this one, and Aaron Englander plays uh, banjo. And um, it's nice to, to be out of that uh, small space where you do absolutely everything because it's very confining. Yeah, and we had another uh, album we were playing last year, I think, you and uh, Putnam Smith. Yeah, 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 that ended up making a great double CD full of storytelling, uh, that's called Lefty, and it's a it's a double CD about all the songs that were written about, around, on the tailgate of, and have anything to do with a mutual pickup truck that we both owned. And I was just sitting in the kitchen in the middle of the winter trying to dream up a studio project, and I thought, man, we had played a show to pay tribute to this pickup truck we both owned when it finally rusted out, and uh, we donated it to WERU, and... Um, we put that together as a project, and it was great. We did that down in the studio at Whisperingham Productions, is the name of my studio in Camden. Well, I was going to ask you about Camden, which is where you live and and work, and you you have your own recording studio. Yeah, I built it there. Uh, we bought our house in uh, 2013, and one of the first things I did was just frame up the basement and make a you know the best studio yet. I used to record in little carpet lined boxes and rental spaces and whatever I could get my hands on. So. It's nice to have a real studio as much as, you know, you can put that in air quotes, but it's getting there. So the, the new CD is just out. In fact, you've got a, uh, you've got a CD release show coming up, uh, and uh, it'll be in Bull Moose and other places where people can purchase it. Yeah, I... it should be in Bull Moose within a couple of weeks. Uh, it's available digitally just everywhere right now. CD Baby's got copies of discs, but Bull Moose ought to have it within a couple of weeks, I think. And how, how long did you work on this particular CD? Are they, are they, are they, are they new songs? Are they songs yeah, you had for a long time? How, how, how did that process All original, um, the CD you mentioned that I did with Putnam, during mastering, I was already writing this new album. So I was mastering that album. I had already begun to write first three or four songs on this album at that time. So I'd been working on it about a year and a half. And where did the title come from? Uh, the title came from My Kitchen Counter. A lot of the subject matter in this CD is about parenthood and the struggles of just getting through the day, staring across the empty wasteland 
of your countertop at 10,000 empty water glasses. All right, we are talking with Gabriel Sakai. The new record is 10,000 empty water glasses, and it's available at Bull Moose and other places. Tell us about the CD release event you have coming up on October 12th. Yeah, the last show of the season is going to be the CD release show at Rock City Coffee in Rockland. October 12th should be somewhere around 6 p.m. That's still being juggled. We'll be playing the whole album with the full band, my wife Selena on bass, Mark Bubar on drums. We'll be running the whole album. We'll have CDs for sale. That sounds good. Now, you say the last show of the year, do you kind of take the winters off from playing? or Cold season, yeah. yeah. When, uh, when, the, when the voice starts to go, you know, I've pushed it before and I've paid the price for it. But it's been a long summer. We've, we've played a couple of great shows in Portland. We've played all over uh, the Midcoast. And it's time for a little break. And I've got a new project with... Uh, Mark Bubar, the drummer, which is more of a studio-based project, and we're working on that now. So we're going to take a little rest, work on that, and I'm sure I'll get tired and uh, of that and need to play live again soon. So I'll reach out and try to book some shows within a few months. And if people want to keep up with your comings and goings, what's what's the easiest way to do that? Some sort uh, of website? GabrielZakai.com. Has, you can use that. You can follow that to just about everything that I do. And, you know, on uh, Facebook, that's probably the best place to get updated shows coming up, dates, uh, new releases, stuff like that. Probably social media, but you can get there and anywhere to anything that uh, we're doing through gabrielzakai.com. All right, and give us the details one more time about the uh, CD release show. CD release show, October 12th, Rock City Coffee, Rockland, Maine, full band. CD sounds terrific. Thanks for coming down to the show. And uh, we do have time for one more as we exit this interview, one more song. And I think you picked one out. Which one are we going to hear? Yeah, I get, I've been getting some feedback all over. And the one of the two songs that people are just continually telling me they love is uh, Front Porch Swingin'. And this song was written uh, while I was still working for a bank, which I, I got rid of that problem. One of the great folks I worked with, he came in on my birthday and he handed me a cigar box guitar made out of a real cigar box. And he goes, this is for you. The boss was gone. And I sat down. And I wrote this song in my cubicle before I went home that day. I quit a little while later, but this song actually was written quite a while back. Uh, this is one of the two songs on this album that weren't recorded, you know, at the same time uh, in, in the last year and a half. This was remastered. It just had a feeling. The Cigar Box guitar had a feeling, and it, it just made me feel like this. Well, Gabe Zakai, thanks for coming down to the show again, and uh, we'll see you somewhere down the road. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks for having me, man.